They're actually a lot more stable than I considered they're going to be. Muddy. Let's see some speed. <laughs> Aftermath of speed. <laughs> Oh yeah, good. Slippery on an angle, you guys can't really see it, but there's the Superman jump. You guys know what it's like in here. It's gonna be a bog. Mud, 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 mud. Because I'm wearing the boots, I'm on recovery patrol. In three, two, one, mud bog. Oh, I ended up on my side. You did not wraith wide, Axel. Shall we try again? Okay, so shall we say first one to the to the top up there? Sure. Yeah, ready? Three, two, one, mud bog. Oh, again, I go over. Oh, John wins again. Nice. Oh, your spur gear, bro. Slipper clutch. Slipper. Yeah. John's got the slipper all tightened up. Yeah, I think we should switch sides. The sun was in my eye. Okay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we do that. Nice. So much speed in the brushless. <laughs> yeah. Three, two, one, go. 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 Nice. Still win. Brushless power again. This time, at least, I was able to stay on all fours. <laughs> nice job, thank you. Hey, listen, we know that it already kicks butt at uh, going through the slop. Do you want to see if we can do a slippery hill climb on the side here? Yeah. Through the water and then up the side. It's going to be a bit of a challenge, but I think your truck can definitely do it, especially with those wide axles and the nice thin tires. You can do it at your own speed. Oh, too much power. Oh, nice recovery. Oh, plenty, dude. That was nice. Nailed it. Let's see here. I got to turn. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Sounded like my spur gear was giving me an issue. All sloppy and wet. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I may have got lucky there. <laughs> I just tried to keep a straight line. I'm gonna get John to rip around so I can film this awesome truck for you. It's got plenty of power. Oh, reverse. <laughs> nice job, nice job. See, high center of gravity. You're gonna run into this with these, uh, with these monster mud trucks for sure. But his wider axles are definitely assisting. I gotta lean. Yeah, you know why it's leaning, right? The it's, weight of the it's mud. All, it's all the mud on the side <laughs> of it. Get some of those tires cleaned out. That 3S LiPo, it sure puts out a lot. But with those two motors and that much mud. I'm not flipping as bad now. You should almost make a mud course. Oh. I think a mud course is in, I, yeah. should be in production right now. I agree. So if I follow the leader and see if you can get through it without tipping first, like that? Example not to do that. Don't do that. <laughs> first one to do three laps, eh? All right, so there's our circle. First one to get around three times without flipping. John, because you uh, won most without, without flipping, you get to have the inside track. Or do you want the outside track? Maybe it's up to you. 
There's, you, I'll take the more mud. I'll give you less mud. <laughs> there we go. Okay. You ready? So three laps to cross this cone right here. As soon as you cross this cone three times, one, two, three, back to this spot, you win, but no flipping. You ready? I'm ready. In three, two, one, go. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh nice, oh nice, pushing me out of the way. Oh, inside! Oh, I flipped! Oh! Did you do a jump over off yeah, the hill I, there? Yeah, I pretty much had a <laughs> pin it or lose it. Okay, three, two, one, go! Oh, nice! Tried to get me right away. Oh, I'm out! Fail! Fail! You win again! All right, wide axles are clearly dominating the day today. Look at this rig. John, I appreciate you sacrificing the rig, bringing it out, getting it all dirty for everybody to see. That's what it's made for. That's exactly right. We finally got the mud trucks out into some real mud. I think we should do one more. We could do it monster truck style and start at opposite ends. I think that's a great idea. You want to head her down to the pylon there? I like this idea. Monster truck rally. That way we're not pushing each other over. You ready? I'm ready. In three, two, one, mud bog. <laughs> in your way, in your way. Oh, nice! <laughs> oh, he's in the lead. Oh, my batteries are dead. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, John wins again. <laughs> Good job, dude. Yeah. Today, you are superior. <laughs> I wanted to say, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Hopefully you've had some inspiring insight today on the things that you can do with your scale truck. Build a, a, a rock crawler, build a mud truck. It really doesn't matter. And apart from budget and money, there really is no limit to the imagination when you're in the radio control hobby. Agreed? Agreed. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Bye. My oh my, look at what we have in the shop today. John, welcome back. Hello. Hello, hello. You've brought back your mud truck. I did. And I have been working on a separate mud truck. This actually is a redo of my truck, The Beast. Now half of you out there are like, oh, you have destroyed it. And the other half are like, man, that is awesome. But I'm telling you right now, the monster mud stang is in the house. Now. Let's start over here with John's truck because we have seen it before with a red Dodge body on it. It has a red axial Dodge body. Right, okay, so it was the power wagon, I think. Yeah. Now, as we move around your truck, just kind of give everybody a once over here. I don't think people can really kind of grasp the size of this truck. So let's get another one and put it beside just a regular stock SCX-10. I don't know which one's stockish. <laughs> I don't think we have any left that's stock, man. Okay, well, how about the blue Komodo that's up there? It's barely lifted on the trailer there. Dun, 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 dun. There, that's a good size. Yeah. Put it beside your monster mud truck and we can actually have a good look at height difference. There you go. So considerably larger. You may, if you've missed the video where we actually had an overview of John's truck, you may be noticing these incredibly skinny tires that he's got on there. These are actually made tires that he's done, modified them, cut them down, re-glued them. And the reason that tires are like this, shall I explain it or should you, sir? Uh, you can have that. Okay, all right, so here we go. So with these tractor tires, basically what they're made to do is to slice through deep mud. With really wide tires, right, you get a lot of mud buildup and all of a sudden it just kind of becomes slick and with a wide surface area, it makes it hard to cut down to the bottom and to get some grip, correct? That's correct, yeah. So also, if you guys notice, I don't know, you may, some keeners might, might notice here, this back tire is actually wider than his front tire. And what's the size on the back tire there, on the, the width of the tire, do you remember? They're an inch and a half. Inch and a half, and the fronts are? One inch. One inch, and the reason you did that on yours was? Just thinking if I can keep the weight on the back of the truck, mm -hmm. 
Then it'll uh, keep the front up, but it'll, where the weight is, you'll have more traction because you got nice. The so steering to cut through the, the thick sloppy mud is the theory. Now, one of the things that you'll notice on mine is that these are actually the purchase tires from RC four wheel drive. And you can see right on the side here, mud basher tractor tire. Now these have a huge sidewall on them and lots of foam. This I think is actually gonna be a little bit problematic for me because the mud I have here is very, very sticky. It's gonna get caught up in these old Chevron style treads. And uh, once the weight starts to to kick in like here let's actually have a look at this komodo these are just regular sized tires <laughs> you guys can see there's a considerable difference now inside the beast for those that actually know have been following along i actually have a dual motor setup they're brushed 35 turn motors running on a single rx8 now a lot of people might think that's odd and why would you run two brushed motors on an rx8 but after speaking with tekin back in the day they totally said no problem and that's why i've hooked them up one two both of them have a 20 tooth pinion now john what's the pinion in yours Mine's a 13 tooth pinion. Right. So <laughs> one of the things that I have not done properly yet, and I know already just before I've even tested it, is because the size of the tire is so large. These are a huge 2.2 size tire that are very, very tall, that if I have these 20 tooth pinions on here on a stock 87 turn spur gear, this is gonna cause incredible stress on those two motors because of the gear ratio and extra weight on the front. Now for John, he actually, went with a brushless motor could you pull the top off here yeah, so we can have a look okay so underneath you've got drive shaft yeah that's had, an extended drive shaft yeah had to extend it had to weld it in there to make it long enough because of my long links i brought the rear back quite a bit okay so you're going to have a longer wheelbase than i am right away yeah right so back here which will help give you more traction overall but one of the things we've noticed with mine is that i actually have more ground clearance you do because of how long your truck is but that causes an issue with mine but before i get on to that tell me about these axles bud they're uh, uh the ar60 wraith axles yeah so they're so standard wraith axles. Standard plastic wraith axles. Yeah, and but do you look at the, the width difference between the AX10s. A lot of you guys will notice that my uh, tires actually toe in a little bit. And the reason why that is, is so when I'm climbing hills, it actually has a grabbing action in the middle. Now, John has gone with the straight, um, and true tires straight up front. One of the things we talked about though, and he agrees, is that the turning radius is definitely improved when you got a bit of a toe in. This one right here being so wide, he is gonna have some great area uh, to really dig in and not so uh, tip or top heavy. Mine with the shorter or the SCX10 axles, this is more prone to tipping. With these tires being so kind of firm, if I had these ones on here it would tip way more but where I've got the wider truck tire if I'm not in the mud I can still turn still have quite a bit of roll to it and my truck doesn't roll over our shocks are different what are they from I don't know what they're from I got them in a trade and just kind of had them kicking around so I threw them on there okay and I noticed that you actually have your uh, spring rate, your pre, your um, your pre-adjustment rings there. They're quite firm, right? The truck overall, it seems to be not too bad in the front, bounces up and down, but nice and controlled. And in the back, it's very, very firm. Can you explain that to me? Well, when, I just don't want to get in the mud and then have the axles trying to work their ways out of it. I want to chew and just go straight. If it's got a bounce over it, it can bounce. Nice. I don't really want it to absorb this and try and keep the tires down. If they want to come up, let them come up. So, so it's definitely not a, a specific rock crawler. This is really purpose built. Yeah, it's probably the first you can get from a rock crawler. Yeah. <laughs> For those that are interested in building tires like uh, John's, I'm going to be uh, doing the same thing. I've already pre-ordered. Check it out. 5171. What tires are these for, John? Traxxas Emax. The Emax. They're quite large. You want to grab one of those out there? I also grabbed some rims off of eBay. Uh, 5372A. These are 3.8s. 
Look at this monster tire. This is what John's tire actually came from. <laughs> and you'll see that he did a really good job of cutting them down and bringing them together. Now I will be building tires like this in the future for my rig because I'd like the skinnier tire. So we will go over that in the future. But for those keeners that are out there, do you want to give them a quick rundown on how to do it? I can give you a really quick rundown. Yeah, okay. So you'll just take your rim, take your tape, this is a two inch tape. We'll give mm -hmm. you the one inch tire for two inch tape. Okay. And you'd wrap it all the way around the tire, but you just make it nice and even. You can measure one side out. Okay. Right? Then you'll cut here and cut there. So and it'll keep your line true. Nice. Even if you if it does wobble a little bit, at least the other side's gonna wobble with it too. So one of the things you also mentioned is when you cut the rim itself to use some sandpaper to yeah. true the line to make sure that they're gonna come together properly. Yeah, just to get it roughed up so your glue adheres better. Yeah. You'll lay yourself a piece of sandpaper down, say 80 grit or yeah. you know, whatever you got. Just rub your tire nice and flat along it. Okay. If there is a little dip, maybe you can at least smooth some of your tire out. Right. Or the high spot, you can smooth a little bit of it out. And you just do that on both sides. Then you uh, take your epoxy, same thing, mark your rim so you know what to do. Orientation. Yeah. And then uh, glue it back together. And uh, clamp it, let it sit for 24 hours and come back and give her a test. Full cure times is a major a major thing to pay attention yeah. to because once you start twisting those tires you don't want it to come off in mid in mid rotation because you didn't wait long enough hey yeah when they're on there they're on there yeah like a kid at christmas you got to make sure to wait for the good results <laughs> So on the other thing I thought I'd mention is that I'm actually using side posts to mount this up. I did have an old Clodbuster body on here, uh, which just had the side mount as well, but I did have to put in a small foam block. Now again, I don't have a lot, a lot of uh, articulation in the back, which is fine. There's no body rub there. In the front, of course, it's almost comically small, but just like in monster truck fashion, I actually do have quite a bit of articulation here. Same with John's truck on that side, um, but I don't have a lot of rub so that's perfect as you know good as I can get there I bet everybody's gonna want to see the steering throw now we're both using the same servo and it's a very fast strong servo it's certainly not to scale speed when I'm moving my radio I can just move it slower so it looks more scale and it may seem like that tire rubbing is gonna be a problem on my spring but it's not guys what happens is the spring just starts to turn as the tire is turning so it's no big deal it doesn't rub or cause any damage at all now over here on John's can you give me a twist there so he's getting quite a bit as well. Yeah, and we'll just go both at the same side. Yeah, that way. So it's still quite a bit. Yeah, they look good to go, I think. So having a look at the back of the beast, you'll see what I've done is I've actually used the MIP limiting straps uh, for my low C5T. <laughs> I've modified them a little bit, and the reason why I've done that, John, do you have any torque twist in your rig? I don't. Not at all, Not hey? A lot. But you'll also notice that if you can see it properly, John's uh, spring is actually bowing out a little bit. Same here because it is so firm in the rear end. So what I did as well is I also put an internal spring on uh, these shocks here, gave it the limiting straps. And the reason why I did the limiting straps is because these, these are actually from a uh, Savage, uh, Savage XL. So off of a monster truck straight onto the axles here, I, I do have an aluminum truss holding all my links together and you'll see in the back everything is all metal um, but these limiting straps what that helps is because I can tighten them down and because I still have some movement in the back just like a real or full-sized monster truck really that when that these motors are torquing I don't get any more twist because this limiting strap actually helps so same size tires basically if I line them up size side by side they're about the same height I've got a little bit of extra width on the back but I fully expect my older motors in here to give me a little bit of trouble when we go out into the mud uh, and since it snowed today what do you figure we go outside in the mud for a little bit I figure there's mud out there it's a, a little dark but I know after showing people these two trucks they're going to want to see some mud action would you agree I would agree you have to see some mud we have to go outside Didn't get to last time. no I agree let's go do it you ready my friend I'm good let's do it Ha, ha, ha. 